Hey there, YouTube. This is Mr. Lubufu, and I am here with a deck tech. I know I don't do many deck techs, um, but it normally takes me... It's, it's due to two reasons. One, I, am, I, I jump ship on decks very quickly, and two, it takes me a long time to complete a deck, especially when it comes to standard as opposed to modern or other ones. But I do have a modern deck complete. Maybe I'll show that one off in a future video. But this is one that I was inspired to do by... Uh, by the Pro Tour results, it is a variation, I'm going to say, because it's very, very similar to one of the lists that's already happened, um, just with some tweaks that I wanted to try out for myself. So, the deck is called Not Quite Devoted to Blue, um, though, if you were to look at the mana base and you'd start off and you'd be like, oh, look, look, islands, lots of islands, um, and you'd say, oh, yeah, it looks like a basic list. Uh, but instead of running Mutabolts, which I think is wrong, I think I need I would replace these two swamps with Mutabolts so I could ever get a hold of them. But I'm also running two swamps, the full four Temple of Deceits, and the full four Watery Graves. So I'm playing a, a blue-black version of it, uh, which I feel has some strengths, at least in my local metagame, just because there's, like, what made Mono Blue so powerful is its red-green matchup is very good. Um... I don't see a lot of red-green in my local meta, but I see enough that makes me want to play um, uh, a, a different set of cards. So in the one-drop slot, it's a little bit awkward um, because of the blue-black. I eased up on the one-drops as opposed to the mono blue list. So I'm only playing two Cloudbin Raptor and uh, three Judges Familiar and a Singleton Raptor Hybridization in the main. Um, I like having, like, even one of outs, though I'm not sure if it's technically correct to have the Raptor hybridization. I also don't like Cloudfin Raptor that much. Um, it gets sideboarded out a lot, just because of how less on the aggressive side. This is more of a mid rangey sort of shell. I really like Druid's Familiar. Um, it really slows down a lot of decks in my local, just, or in my local meta, because they just want to be playing creatures. And having a Jota's Familiar to at least stall them a turn or ma or just counter the spell at the cost of a random 1-1 one, one, typically does a lot of work. Um, and as I said, the one the one of Rapid Hybridization is typically just to uh, have certain answers in my deck that can't otherwise... that bleh, bleh, English hard. Anyway, in the 2-drop we have 2 Omen Speaker. Um, I, I only like playing 2 of them just because Devotion's not that high. But it's only an okay card. I, w I would prefer Augur of Bolas, to be totally honest. The full four Frostburn Weird. And the full four Tidebinder Mage. Um, both of these guys are kind of straightforward. Double blue casting costs. Um, it also... I mean, there's enough green in the meta that Tidebinder Mage can do work. I'm also playing uh, two Cyclonic Rift. Which, another thing I would like to change about the mana base if I got the chance. But I would replace... Maybe a Swamp with a, uh, a Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx, just to make the overloading a little bit more plausible. But having a random bounce spell can really play tempo -y fairly well. Um, now onto the three manas. Three manas. All the three manas. Uh, we have one of my favorite cards to cast, and that would be Night Veil Spectre. Getting triple blue for Devotion, especially for little old Thassa, God of the Sea, is ridiculously powerful. Um, Thassa is remarkably good, the fact that she's on three and she can just do a lot of work. And making her creatures unblockable is also not bad. But now we see what the Black Splash is for and why I'm not having to commit so heavily. It's because I need black on turn three because I like having three Ashiok in the main. Um, I like having three Ashiok over, I believe uh, the list had two Clownfin Raptor and a Judge's Familiar. Pulls a little bit away from the aggro, like I mentioned, but it's a harder to deal with uh, blue permanent. And in in my local meta, it just I mean it wrecks mid range, um, mid range creature decks rather, because it just can get you free value. If they have to direct their attacks at her and or her it thing. It's got no face. Um, so yeah, I really like Ashiok in, in in this in this particular shell. That's why I ease up on the one drops, including the fact that I have to play some shock lands, some of the scry lands, and some swamps. So I didn't want to be too over committing on the black. Or on the on the one drops. For four drops I have two Jace Architect of Thought. Um, I like having at least two Jace in the main. Uh, it can just shut off Elspeth, for example. 
at least for tokens at first, which is kind of nice. A Singleton Bident of Thassa. Since I'm, since I'm running fewer creatures, having only one Bident I feel is correct. And then uh, the full four Master of Waves. The Surf's Up, dude. Uh, he's, he's a big finisher as opposed to Thassa. So that's kind of the main deck. Um, for sideboarding, I do have... Um, it's spread out. I'm still trying to figure out exactly the sideboard, but this is what I have done right now. A second Biden. Um, it, it, just in case I need to get the, uh, the extra card draw, it's very good against control. Another reason I'm playing black is I actually have two Thoughtseize in the side. Um, Thoughtseize is one of those cards that I didn't want to play main. Um, I'd rather have the extra, the extra blue cards and blue creatures. But typically, if, if I feel Thoughts is, is good in a matchup, I'll probably take out Cloudfin Raptors for it. Um, or Rapid Hybridizations. I play, or have two Pithing Needles in the side. Uh, for those heavy Planeswalker matchups and control. Two more Jace Architect of Thoughts. Uh, two Etherling. Which, I, I'm contemplating whether or not, like, a lot of the pros had an extra land in the sideboard, because having 25 lands in the main helps be able to cast Ethling with blue up to be a little bit better, and I'm considering that. Um, I probably want to take out, I, I do have two Triton Tactics. It's very good against Anger of the Gods, um, just, and in combat as well. Just being able to get the, uh, a blowout or two, um... For a single blue man is not bad. I'd probably want to swap one of these out, but again, I don't have Muta Vaults, which is probably what I'd want to replace it with. Two Ratchet Bombs, I think, are a complete necessity. This deck has major trouble mist with uh, Mist Cutter Hydra and, like, Advent of the Worm, so that's a thing. Um, Desecration Demon's also a card, but for the most part, I'm relying on, on just getting ahead before it gets out of hand. The last two slots are filled with a Wall of Frost and a Doomblade. Um, I'm not sure whether or not I should run Doomblade or Ultimate Price. I, I'm leaning right now towards Ultimate Price a little bit over Doomblade. Um, because the cards that this deck has trouble for are typically monocolored, except for like, I mean, Obzid Ops of Pain, but neither Doomblade nor Ultimate Price take care of it. Desecration Demons beaten by Ultimate Price, but not Doomblade. Boros Reckoner, this, card, this deck typically doesn't have too much of a problem. I mean, it's a little bit frustrating, um, but typically it's tapped down by Tidebinder Mage or blocked by a Master of Waves or something like that, or even Frostburn Weird. So that's typically not too big of a problem. Um, so this is basically the deck I'll be running for the uh, Theros game day. I will give you guys an update to see how it goes, but this is what I have set up. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, and uh, thank you guys all for watching.